All right, we're going to keep talking about real-world assets, so-called real-world assets, RWA is usually how you uh, see it abbreviated. Uh, and this time we're going to talk about private, private investments. So we talked before about bringing real-world assets or assets that are you know, more traditional, things like real estate, private investments, even credit, something like that. That, that where I would normally interact with you, where we interact not so-called on-chain, but where we decide we're gonna have an agreement, and we bring that from off-chain or off of a public blockchain on-chain. And so that's what we're doing here with kind of private investments. And a lot of times you'll see something in here like security tokens, uh, which I think are going to be extremely important. And so First, we have to step back, as always, and go, why do we even need something like this? Are we trying to solve a problem that isn't there? And hopefully we're not. So the problem, if you've ever invested in some sort of private investment, and I'll talk a lot about real estate because that's the one that people think about most, but it can be any private company. It, you know, it could be your friend's company. It could be someone who raises money for their business and, and you invest. You might be a, a VC or an or a angel investor, something like that. What you do on a, a typical business, let's say that there's going to be a real estate business, there's someone named Gary who's going to be running it. And if I'm going to invest, let's so say I'm going to put $100,000 in, I put $100,000 into you know a, a bank account, and then Gary is going to take that money and go buy real estate. And it might be one piece, it might be you know every, um, every investment is for one piece of property, it might be for multifamily or, or for a commercial use or something. Uh, or it might be for a portfolio of companies, but I put my $100,000 in. And what do I get? I get this huge stack of paperwork that I have to sign, and this denotes my ownership. This is how I know that I own it, because I get this big stack of paperwork that I've signed. I keep that in a filing cabinet somewhere. Now, as what, what happens here as well is as this real estate as it, it is hopefully kicking off some sort of income, right? Because you have renters uh, that are paying money here, this goes to the bank, uh, Gary gets his cut, and then sends some of the uh, you know, monthly, probably quarterly distribution back to me based on how much money was earned minus how many uh, costs and expenses there are. I get some sort of distribution here, and that's why I'm into this. That's why I'm investing in this, because I want this regular income stream that comes from the distribution, but I also want the value of this to grow. So if the value of this property goes up 25% or something, then what happens at the end when, when Gary, when the team decides to sell it, is eventually my 100 turns into 125 plus whatever income I've earned along the way. Now, keep in mind here, this is usually extremely illiquid. Part of the paperwork I've signed, whether it's a REIT or whether it's just an investment I make with one person or one group, this is extremely illiquid. That means that once I put my 100,000 in, it's very, very difficult, if not impossible, to get it out. And usually this, it, and, and part of the reason for that is that Gary or whoever the management company is doesn't want to sit there and figure out the value. They don't want to deal with my selling it to somebody else, to some third party that they don't know, because what happens is they have to figure out what the valuation is. They're going to have to provide some sort of paperwork to show this other party how much this is worth. They're likely going to have to draw up these agreements again. They're going to have to make sure that that person is also an accredited investor because they're on the hook for that. And they don't want to have to do that. Their job is to run the real estate, to manage this business, and they don't want to have to do that. So what they say in this paperwork usually is, look, if you really need to get out, you can redeem your shares in the business for, for maybe 90 cents on the dollar or something. We, the company, will buy them back from you if we have the cash to do it so that you don't go sell it to an independent third party. So we don't have to deal with uh, repapering. We don't have to deal with changing up the cap table and everything else. It's a, it's a painful process. That, that That's not what they're around to do. Uh, keep in mind, it's also relatively inefficient that this the dollars go in here. They go to the, you know the, they they pay their rent. They go to the bank account, get expenses taken out, and then probably every quarter I get a check sent to me. And maybe they do direct deposit or, or something like that. But there are all these calculations that have to be done. So this is the way the system works right now. Again, incredibly illiquid by virtue of the fact that it's just a painful process. So where do we see the idea of tokenization, security tokens, bringing some of these, these assets on chain? Um, well, one, the idea is not uh, to buy on-chain property, right? So I'm not talking about going and buying land in the metaverse or anything like that. Although I do know people that, that are doing what's, what it is more likely to happen is Gary is going to take this investment this real estate investment, 
and he might make a, uh, in, and instead of my having to sign a bunch of paperwork, what he might say is, look, anyone who's going to come in first, I'm going to have a vetting process because I need accredited investors here. And so Adam, maybe at some point, this is getting a little bit down the road, but I'm going to connect my wallet and prove that I'm a, an accredited investor. I might not have to hand over a whole bunch of paperwork, but at some point I might be able to prove using you know, some identity solution that's in my wallet that I'm an accredited investor. But let's just assume that, that I'm not there yet. Let's assume it's just Gary is uh, making sure I'm a accredited investor and then I'm going to provide my, my funds. And maybe I'm going to provide those funds in dollars. Maybe I'm going to provide them in something like USDC. But either way, money goes into this investment. It, let's say it's still going to be $100,000. And then maybe what I get in return now is I might get 100,000, we'll call them Gary tokens. Okay, and these are now held in my wallet. So this goes back to the idea of needing to understand wallets and self-custody and how important that is. But now in my wallet, I have 100,000 Gary tokens and each one of those tokens represents one share of this particular real estate investment. And again, I'm using real estate here. This could be any private company. Now, remember, my, my tokens represent my ownership, or sorry, these tokens represent ownership. The fact that, or it represents pieces of this asset, the fact that they're in my wallet says that I now control these tokens. I'm now the owner of these tokens and, and this investment. Now, Gary is going to go ahead and run this real estate business. And hopefully there will be income coming in from something like rents or, or however they make some sort of income. Rent goes here uh, into the bank account. Gary takes out whatever expenses and then distributes. But here's where this might become a little bit more efficient. One way this might become a little bit more efficient is in distributions. Because maybe Gary takes those dollars that come in and converts them to, you know, converts dollars to something like USDC or DAI. Okay, so this is a, a stable coin. Then, because of the fact that I hold 100,000 of these Gary tokens, they know which wallet has these 100,000 tokens and are able to distribute the USDC to the wallet instead of having to send a check. Maybe that means they can do distributions more often. It's a lot easier. It's not checks. It's not direct deposit or anything. They don't have to know anything about my bank account. All they have to know is I have a wallet that's connected. Whoever holds a certain amount of Gary tokens gets this distribution. It's done in USDC and bam, they make their distributions by pressing a couple buttons uh, and it's, it's really easy. It, it might go that way, it might not. How else would, could this be more efficient? This could be much more efficient because remember, now these Gary tokens are tracked on a public blockchain. So on something like the Ethereum blockchain, and this is just one of the chains that is that is doing this on the Ethereum blockchain. Now you're tracking these all, all these Gary tokens, right? So what can happen is I can decide at some point I want maybe I want some bit of liquidity. Not maybe I don't want to sell them all. Maybe I just want to sell half. Maybe I need to sell fifty thousand of my tokens. I need to pay for my daughter's wedding or something. Well, in the old way of doing things, in the TradFi way of investing in in this particular fund or in this particular business. I, that I had to redeem my shares to the company and they were gonna buy them for 90 cents on the dollar. But what if now that the, these tokens or this investment is worth a bit more? Maybe it's kicking off more income than I could get in any other place. Maybe it's giving me 12% income or something and I can only get eight elsewhere and so I can sell some of my tokens if I want to. Maybe the value of, of my tokens has gone up, we'll, we'll call it 10%. So they're now worth $110,000. I want to sell some to pay for my daughter's wedding. Well, in the past, I wasn't able to do that. But now, maybe within here, there's a marketplace for these tokens. And it doesn't mean that just anyone can come because this marketplace might gate and make sure that everyone who comes in is an accredited investor. So if someone comes in and says, look, I'm looking for some of these investments. I need some income. They're all accredited investors. So they don't get to get in here without being accredited. Then they might look across and say, oh, there are some of these tokens that I might want to buy, and I say, and I and I might go, I want to sell fifty thousand of my Gary tokens. They've gone up, you know, ten percent. I will sell my fifty thousand Gary tokens for fifty-five thousand dollars. Now, if someone comes into this marketplace. Uh, we'll call this person Ron, right? So Ron comes in here, 
says, I'm going to take a look at those Gary tokens. He can remember because this is all on chain and transparent, he gets to see how much income has kicked back to them. He gets to see what the valuation is. He gets to see what it owns. All of those things that are pretty public information. Now, be, because it's on chain, he's going to get to view all that and decide for himself what they're worth. And he might say, these are totally worth $55,000. I will gladly buy them from you. Now, via the marketplace, Ron gives me 55,000, probably USDC. And in the exchange, he gets 55,000 or 50,000 of my Gary tokens. So I now have 50,000. Ron now has 50,000 Gary tokens. Okay, now what has happened here is Gary, who's actually running this, has not had to go back and repaper, right? Because we already made sure Ron was an accredited investor. Gary has not had to go back and, and tell Ron what these are worth. Why? Because everything is visible on chain because it's transparent because we can see all the transactions. You can see how much income I have received from these tokens and, and what they own. Um, all the paperwork, keep, keep in mind these Gary tokens, basically we have encoded all that paperwork I had to have before have been encoded in these tokens. So in here is what it means to be an owner, all the rules, who you can sell to, uh, how you have to hold them, how often you, you get distributions, what, what kind of quorum has to happen in order for Gary and the team to decide to sell the property outright. All of that is encoded in these tokens. So now I have 50,000 and Ron has 50,000. And here's the beauty of it from an efficiency standpoint for Gary and why they want to do it is as the rents come in, dollars come in, Gary maybe converts those from dollars to USDC. Now, it, they don't they don't care that I now went from 100,000 to 50,000. All they're going to do is look across all the wallets, how many tokens they hold, and make the distributions proportionally. So in the past, when I was getting enough distribution for 100,000 tokens, now I'm getting distribution for 50,000, and Ron is getting distribution for 50,000. There's no, not much additional paperwork or not much additional work that Gary and the management team have to do. And this is why you know, the idea of security tokens, but the idea of private investments moving moving this the the denotion of of the of that asset on chain can add so much efficiency it can add the idea of liquidity it can add the efficiency from this team of being able to distribute funds it obviously adds a great deal of transparency and remember we can wrap rules around it so within these t these uh, tokens that are that are on chain, we'll say on the Ethereum blockchain, the paperwork in here might say, I can't sell these for a year. So the, these tokens are encoded with, with this you know, smart contract that says, if it hasn't been 365 days, Adam can't sell anyway. Maybe it says Adam can only sell on one of these three marketplaces and the person buying it has to be a credit investor. All of that can be within the token. So it's not like I can just go wild and sell them to whoever I want to and you know, violate the terms or violate regulations or something, that can all be encoded in there. So we have all these great efficiencies. Now remember, because of the liquidity, because of the fact that I can transfer 50,000 of my tokens to someone else, who of course is an accredited investor, who has gone through this marketplace, who has looked and decided how much they wanna pay for it, because I can do that, now I also open up the ability of collateralization. And that basically means I can take my 50,000 Gary tokens or my 100,000 Gary tokens, and maybe I can get a loan and use those as collateral. So maybe I decide I want to get a loan and I want to pledge 25,000 of my Gary tokens as collateral, and that gets wrapped into some sort of smart contract such that if I, you know, I borrow, let's say I borrow $25,000 against my 25,000 Gary tokens, these are wrapped in a smart contract. So I got 25,000, probably USDC, and I'm going to have to pay it back over time. And if, there, if there's a point when I stop paying it back, this smart contract and whatever this is, this could be a protocol, this could be a company, this could be a bank, this could be a person who, is, who has loaned me the money, is able to um, is able to liquidate some of my tokens and take some of them. We can even make it to where this income stream flows through here and pays back the, the interest that I owe. We can do all those things efficiently. So because we have private companies on chain, eventually private real estate or whatever, I'm going to add efficiency. I'm, I'm going to add efficiency for the management company because of how they can distribute because they're giving the opportunity for the investors to be able to liquidate, to be able to trade with each other without the management company have to, having to do anything. It's also much easier to track who has what. This isn't paperwork. If I move, it doesn't matter. 
if I move because everything is denoted on chain. So it's much more efficient. You get a more liquid market. You get much more transparency. You can encode certain certain rules, regulations uh, around the the uh, the smart contracts and the contracts I signed. You have the ability to collateralize. You have the ability to get a loan against private company assets that maybe you weren't able to do before. These are all reasons why we, uh, J.P. Morgan, Citigroup, uh, Boston Consulting Group, BlackRock, everyone sees this opportunity to tokenize uh, private investments and put them on chain, and it's not to make them more volatile. It's not so people can trade them more often. It's because we get all these efficiencies, this liquidity uh, ability, this uh, uh, ability to collateralize our assets, this ability to just see what, what we have, the transparency. We get all of that by utilizing tokenization, by utilizing the blockchain technology and it doesn't make it a crypto asset. It just makes it an asset, a real world asset, a real investment that I made into some bit of real estate. It's just that we're utilizing the next generation system, the next generation database to keep track of it. And when we do that, when we use this open source database that we can put rules around and we use smart contracts around it, we can just be much more efficient. And that is part of the excitement. Now, what you have to realize is you still have to kind of understand how tokens work. You still have to kind of understand the wallet and self-custody. But the beauty here also is I get to custody this myself. I don't have to have a, a bank that custodies this necessarily. I, I don't have to worry about, you know, I lose the paperwork in a fire or flood or, or move or something like that. It's all, you know, in my wallet. And so I have to understand how to use a wallet and how self-custody works and security and safety and, and everything. But it becomes a much more efficient, more liquid system. So that's what is exciting about private investments that are still off-chain investments, but how we move some of the, the denotion of and move some of the asset on-chain so that we can be more efficient.